Hey there, Heidi Cooper here, functional medicine practitioner, licensed esthetician from Skin Side Out. So today I want to ask you guys the question, are hormonal issues actually mitochondrial dysfunction? So over the past several years, I've seen more and more people with hormonal imbalances coming in with different skin issues, just um, estrogen dominance, PCOS, low testosterone, all sorts of things going on. And they're doing different therapies, a lot of them natural um, or bioidentical therapies to treat some of these hormonal imbalances. And not that these things are necessarily bad, but are they really the source of why that hormonal imbalance is there? Do people just have low hormones or out of balance hormones for no reason? My clinical experience would say no that we just have to dig deeper, that there's really mitochondrial dysfunction at the crux of why these hormonal imbalances are going on. And the reason for that is we are, we are living in the most toxic time ever in the world. Um, the EPA has listed over 85,000 chemicals on its um, inventory of substances that fall under the Toxic Substances Control Act, and that's just the ones that are listed. And why that's important is these chemicals interfere with our mitochondria's ability to function properly. So remember back in school when we learned about mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell, um, they, they produce ATP, which is energy, and why that's so critical is if we have the ATP producing energy like it's supposed to, then we have a cell that's working the way that it's supposed to, then we have organs that are working the way that it's supposed to, and systems that are working the way that they're supposed to. So if we have a whole um, endocrine system that is our hormones not functioning properly, we have to just dial it back all, all the way to that mitochondrial level to see what is going on there that's, that's creating a disruption. So there was a study done in 2004 and it showed that, that there were 287 chemicals found in the cord blood of these babies that was born. So can you imagine what it's even like now? Because this was all the way back in 2004. And 180 of these chemicals caused cancer and 207, 17, sorry, were toxic to the brain and the nervous system. And so all of that to be said, when, when we're born into an environment with this toxic burden already, and then we have the additional outside interference to contend with as well, it becomes a situation where our body, even though we have this amazing, um, you know, these amazing detoxification organs in our body, they become so overburdened, they are just not able to keep up with processing all of what we're exposed to. And so that's where some of this dysfunction begins to occur. We work with something in our office called a meta-oxy test, and it's a urine test that shows cellular inflammation. And the reason that that's so critical, it shows us how the cell is, is if it's inflamed, then it means that the good things that you are doing can't get into the cell, and then the waste that the mitochondria produce when they produce ATP can't get out of the cell, and that creates this mitochondrial dysfunction or the cellular dysfunction and therefore it has this cascading effect and in this case we're talking about hormones and how that can be impactful and so in our office we always want to look upstream as to the root cause of why some of these issues are going on and um, one of my frustrations in the functional medicine world is that a lot of times just some of these downstream um, natural therapies to balance hormones or to increase hormone levels is given without any regard for the reason why they would be, um, these hormones might be out of balance or low in the first place. And I believe also societally we've been conditioned to believe that our hormones just decline with age. And although there's some truth to that, um, it really has more to do with the hormone receptors and how all of that is functioning as to how well um, our hormones are functioning for us. So I wanted to share some information about things that you can do to make sure that your mitochondria are, are functioning the best that they can. 
Number one is you want to avoid environmental toxin exposures as much as possible. I mean, the things that we have control over, like personal care products and our food, um, you know, things that we use in our home. And I've done other videos on that if you want to take a look on some of the things that I have um, shared that you want to make sure that you stay away from that you actually have control over. So that's number one. Number two is to eat an anti-inflammatory whole foods diet. And you have an, if you have a question about what that looks like, please feel free to reach out. But I always encourage people to just really start with whole food items. It's a great way, a great place to start and um, lowering some of that toxic burden. And of course, organic, um, certainly when you can. Number three is to stay hydrated and um, with filtered water and making sure that you're you're um, having a proper intake of water on a daily basis to help keep things functioning the, the way that they should. Number four is exercise and support detox pathways. So that exercise can be really helpful. Um, saunas, dry brushing, all of that can be very helpful as well. And number five is sleep. Sleep is a really critical part of the detoxification process. You guys have heard me talk about the importance of sleep time and time again because it is such a critical piece for things to work properly on a cellular and mitochondrial level. And then number six is cellular detoxification, something that we work with in our office where it's a, um, it's a precise process of removing some of these toxins that have accumulated over time from the body and assisting the body's natural detoxification processes in removing this on a cellular level. So this is much different than doing like a juice cleanse or a you know couple week um, detox program. This is a much more involved process where we're actually working with things that cross the blood brain barrier and work on a cellular level to remove these, these toxins from the body. A lot of times we have a situation where these toxins sit on the brain and they affect the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And in turn, that has a cascading effect on all of our hormones. So when we start removing some of these toxins that are sitting on the brain, in the brain, then we start to create a situation where the body can, can work as it should and that HPA axis starts regulating hormones properly for us. So. I hope that was some helpful information for you. Um, we've really seen some incredible things over the years. You know, it's part of my journey. I was um, diagnosed with Hashimoto's many years ago and um, did some supportive things naturally, but it never really was addressing root cause. And the, you know, working with the cellular detoxification and some of these other things is really the answer to supporting the system Overall, we've seen really amazing um, results with clients over the years as well. So hope that was some helpful information for you. We know a lot of people are working with different hormone therapies and things to balance hormones and it's just not the root cause reason and there are answers and this is it. So um, please share, like and share this video if it was helpful information for you. It can be life-changing, this information, for sure, for people that are really um, struggling with some of these things. So health and happiness. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a super fantastic day. Thanks so much.